Hello, and a very warm welcome to a sunny Mansfield Park. This afternoon, you join us for the very first Premiership fixture of this season, where Hoyk welcome Glasgow Hawks. Hoyk not only come into this game as the current Premiership champions, but they are also undefeated at Mansfield Park since October 2019. Their opponents today, Glasgow Hawks, might have something to say about that though, as they were the last team to beat them here four years ago. The teams this afternoon will also be fighting it out for the Bill McLaren Trophy, which again, Hoyk managed to retain for the whole season last year. We're certainly looking forward to an exciting afternoon of rugby and here with the highlights are Stuart McFarlane and Bruce Aitchison. So this will be a throw-in inside Glasgow Hawks territory across on that far side. Another opportunity here, Fraser Rennick, plenty of experience of course, had some time as a, a Super 6 player. That's a, a clean take and drive from the, the Hoyk forwards that are trying to make some ground up towards the edge of the, the 22 again, trying to direct operations is Gareth Welsh and Welsh very effective as a starter but often off the bench as well, Hoyt continues some forward momentum into the 22 look to strip ball lone runner into the 22 Welsh mops up, Hoyt with an opportunity to try and spread it wide, it's all the way across on this left hand side, McKean looking to accelerate onto the, the ball there. No real opportunity for him to do so on this occasion. Sean Muir has had a, a couple of carries in this first half so far. Bypasses a few players, forward on towards Callum Rennick in the back row. Hoyt still looking to recycle. On it goes again through the hands of Ford. The three, four players out on this right-hand side. And they'd just drawn in the, the Glasgow Hawks team as a collective across centrally in that 22. They spread themselves very nicely, Hoyt. Four players out across on that right-hand side and uh, with less than five minutes on the clock, Hoyk have five points on the board. Bit of movement, just shot towards the front of the line. Misunderstanding there again, so an untidy set piece forces Hoyk back close towards their five-metre line. They have possession of the ball just now. Real power shown there from uh, the Glasgow Hawks lock forwards as they're taking it almost in turns to try and drive Hoyk back but Hoyk trying to return the ball with interest goes a little or gets a little bit loose and untidy picked up there by Gareth Welsh Hoyk now escaping up and beyond their own 10 metre line Graham trundling kick as they kick and chase now Andrew Mitchell with the, the grubber kick which uh, takes play beyond that Glasgow Hawks 10 metre line down towards the corner on the edge of the 22 but suddenly an injection of pace there Hoyk with the line out there and again Fraser Wilson was the target in the line. The lock forward who was able to win possession of the ball. Suddenly some space begins to open up and Morgan Tate who was denied an opportunity a little bit earlier on coming off that right wing finding some space. Again under pressure Gareth Welsh ended up on his backside then on his back tried to release possession of the ball. Hoyk a judge to have knocked forward close towards the edge of the 22. You can see Hoyk have dropped some, uh, one of the forwards <laughs> in the back line. Uh, obviously expecting some kind of launch but Hawks have kept it tight they, they, they showed a little bit of common sense to their structure to get into this position it's now important that they just are patient as you can see another turnover Rennick's all over that ball every chance he gets back it comes then Hoyk string some passes along the edge of the 22 and uh, some real determination shown there by Andrew Mitchell they seem to take a, a forearm almost towards the chin there in a collision up towards the halfway line the referee now signalling the high challenge on Hoyk's outside centre so that uh, taking place just outside of the, the 22 he, he did allow some play to continue advantage for Hoyk but back they will come for the infringement Rennick ball above the head eyes ah, very much on the, the Hoyk hooker back it comes to Welsh the scum half on to fly half and then taken on by Hoyks number eight and again looking to carry and bring him into play at every opportunity Jay Linton out towards the left hand side Ronan McKean again just tries to peel off his wing and back in fuel but a solid challenge comes in there from Sam Graham recycled once more Hoyk look in determined fashion Dalton Redpath carries makes a few valuable metres mopped up by Welsh taken on by Armstrong Armstrong and Mitchell trying to link up an understanding and partnership in this opening game of the season and it's uh, back now with Armstrong 
Tries to evade the challenge, thought about the pass to his right hand side, goes into the contact situation. Welsh in behind, little pop pass. Muir takes the ball forward. Hoyt gaining some ground beyond that 10 metre line between the 10 and the 22, and they're working it back central again. Hawks just forced on their heels at the moment as Welsh mops up. Again, Hoyk have got three, four opportunities and options on that left-hand side to bring players into play. Armstrong did feed the ball towards the left-hand side. Hawks were across pretty sharp edge, though, and they bundled Hoyk players into touch. One of them, Dalton Redpath, slamming a right fist against the turf. And we've played 20 minutes of the contest at Mansfield Park. Hoyk remain in front by seven points to nil. Hawks, this, this is not a great position for them to be in, but the last time they made a really strong exit by playing to the width and setting themselves up for a kick, bringing the Hoyt defence up and exposing Welsh at 15. So it'll be interesting to see what they have a go at here. They've brought the blindside winger across again. I, I love when teams have a crack from here, knowing that Hoyt have to put players in the backfield. So they have got an overlap here. And of course, it's now Mike Donner up against Nicky Little in that uh, Hoyt scrum, and Linton is able to pick up the ball from the scrum, the number eight. Welsh is after him just to recycle ball to keep up a bit of momentum. Welsh has it now. On then towards Fraser Rennick. Rennick is tackled. Once more, Gareth Welsh will try and organise. Glasgow Hawks penalised on the edge of the, the 22. Welsh just takes his time, straightens up, has the ball in hand. Kirk Ford, relatively short run up. Fairly close to being central in front of the sticks. T goes flying to one side. The ball, though, is able to cross the bar between the sticks. And it's Hoyt 10, Glasgow Hawks nil, with 22 minutes on the clock. Just on the edge of the, the 22, and Hoyt have possession once again. Looking to bring the likes of Jay Linton into play. He immediately collides there with Sione Halafini, one of the Glasgow Hawks lock forwards alongside the, the skipper this afternoon, Stephen Lecky. And Hawks just forced backwards uh, again as Hoyk have possession of the ball outside of the 22 on that right hand side. They look to try and take out a man with every pass and up and beyond the 10 metre line. Find solo piece of running this as Hoyk again, determination all the way there. Hoyk looking at Welsh just to recycle this opportunity, but it's a penalty that's been awarded to the home side and the appreciation shown as uh, Hoyk looking to be that little bit more direct and pacey when opportunities come their way. Chance now for Hoyk to go into the, the teens of points, and they do just that. No problems at all for Kirk Ford. They've had a good afternoon with the boot, a conversion, and two penalty goals for the Hoyk fly half. Hoyk 13, Glasgow Hawks nil. Gareth Welsh, the scrum half. Seeding here, line just looking to stand, moves forward, slips the ball into the scrum, and then works it again through the hands well, Linton look to carry and go direct he does, the Hoyt number 8 eventually collides with Wayne Burrows, the inside centre for Glasgow Hawks Welsh the scrum half, on again perhaps not the, the best option as it was a little stop and check kick there from Ford but uh, it did force Glasgow Hawks to take the ball through Sam Graham into touch, as Fraser Rennick Readies himself, throws towards the back of the line. Welsh makes himself available, finds Ford with the pass. There is Armstrong now, evades one, two, three, out the side door, nicely done. Hoyt looking for a one, two, into the 22. Is it going to come off for McKean on this left-hand side? He almost running into treacle there. He was slowed up, they were wrapping themselves round the winger there to try and slow him up as he was getting towards the line. And Hoyk so close to another score before the interval. That's coming a minute from half time, but a much better execution from a set play there from Hoyk. This Hoyk will get this second half underway. Suddenly, some determination immediately shown there as Glasgow Hawks looking to carry Andrew Sim coming on to the. Restart kick at a rate of knots there, but uh, Glasgow Hawks penalised before they can get beyond their own 10 metre line, just on the fringes of the, the 10 there. Welsh then, yeah, they're about uh, a blind side of about 17, 18 metres, but uh, Glasgow Hawks are able to steal and pick the ball up just from that Hoyt put in at the scrum, so gone against the head. Brims then out towards the right hand side. Hawks then looking to work their way up and beyond halfway, taken on by the, the scrum half there. James Emery cut a fine line, was a bit of an isolated figure, pinged a, a kick high up and under, and Hoyt have been able to gather on the edge of the 22. Their attempted clearance kick has been charged down across on that far side of the ball. 
ball goes into touch. So this an attacking platform. There's not been too many line-out opportunities for either side inside the opposition 22, but here is one for Hoyt now, taken towards the back of the line. A little bit uncertainty as the ball eventually found its way to Callum Rennick, who from a standing start weighed up his options a time at least to do so. Welsh then, on then towards Mitchell. Mitchell showing his upper body strength. Welsh in behind again. Hoyt closing in on that five metre line. Three out on their left hand side. One of them is the evergreen Armstrong who tries to spin round like a spinning top away from two or three Glasgow Hawks players. Still just a few metres short of the line. So Rennick. Again taken on by Dalton Redpath in the line. So the platform is set. Rennick has the ball tucked under that right arm. Sort of forced backwards then sideways. But it's time to look up, weigh up his options. They straighten up, they go once again. Hawks looking a little bit more disjointed. The referee squatting down almost on his back said trying to look and then raising the arm and Hoyt have done enough to get that try Muir congratulated by his teammates a real forwards effort there Ford one step back and then comes forward nimble on the toes clean strike two points a further two points and Hoyt now have a 20 nil lead well, Linton is able to win the ball in the line and feed it immediately back to Rennick. Rennick has it now. Welsh makes himself available. Rennick is wrapped in the tackle. The Glasgow Hawks lock forwards are trying to haul the Hoyt hooker to the deck at the moment inside that Glasgow Hawks 22. But it's uh, been mopped up there and uh, Hoyk able to recycle ball. Sean Fairbairn was in good position just to ensure Hoyk maintained possession of the ball. Taken on this time by Dalton Redpath. Hawks again organising their defence just along their own five metre line just now. Hoyk playing to the posts to our right hand side. 20 points to nil in front but it's turnover ball and Hoyk are now watching as uh, Glasgow Hawks trying to engineer a way out of their 22 just now. Desperate calls there from Ryan Flett as he ended up upside down and Hoyk of one possession back inside the 22. The advantage with the home side at the moment, so no exit opportunity in the short period that Hawks had possession inside the 22. Back it comes through the hands of Little. Deft touch there on towards Dalton Redpath. Ball again bobbling about on the deck. Hawks dropping players onto the ball, but they've knocked forward signalling the referee. And back they will come for another set play and the untidy aspect of the, the play, I was going to say from both sides, but has to be said more so from Hawks in this second half has continued. Hoyk feeding the ball into the scrum. It looks as if uh, David Irvin has come back on the field to play along with uh, Max Crumlish. So a couple of uh, replaces as Glasgow Hawks now just trying to slow up the busy Gareth Welsh. The Hoyk scrum half. Just picked up at the base, Rennick then goes to try and drive deeper into Glasgow Hawks 22. It's pick and go once more. Hoyk again looking to reorganise. Five metres from the line, Armstrong. Touch just maybe letting him down just ever so slightly on this occasion because it was just in behind Morgan Tate. It's allowing Glasgow Hawks to pick up that loose ball. They're up towards the edge of their own 22 at the moment. If you're just joining us, it's Hoyk 20, Glasgow Hawks 0. Approaching the midway point in the second half and Hawks through Liam Brims, a high up and under. And again, Hoyk looking to read that. Bailey Donaldson, a replacement in that first half for Charlie Welsh. Donaldson reading the high up and under and taken on now by Gareth Welsh. The scrum half finds Rennick play around that 10 metre line inside the Glasgow Hawks, half of the field relatively central, Welsh goes in again, has a look towards the left hand side Muir takes it on, deft left foot kick this time by Ford was required put maybe a little bit too much on that but it bounces and Hawks have got players back, in their bottom right hand corner, looking to face up the players in dark green jerseys, the dark green uniforms swarming over them just at the moment. Hawks though again looking to try and find an exit inside the 22. Back it comes then to Brims, takes a few steps, launches it right footed downfield, not a touch finder though. Three players in deep lying positions but it's inside the Glasgow Hawks half of the field. All the Hoyt team inside the Hawks half. The deepest of them was Morgan Tate who tries to escape the attentions of those in front of them in red and white. Taken on again by Hoyt down this right hand side. Nice bit of play there by Dalton Redpath. 
on towards his lock forward partner there in Callum Rennick into the 22 it's untidy stuff here Dalton Redpath has a Glasgow Hawks player literally wrapped round his ankles just now as he gets back to his feet it was Liam Brims in fact Nicky Little takes the ball in, solid collision there, picked up by Sean Muir, and Muir finishes off his tight head partner, created a half opening for Sean Muir, two tries in the space of less than 10 minutes, he flings the ball in the direction of his fly half, Kirk Ford, and you have to say, with that score, I think the game is, uh, is now well and truly won. Hoyk with a, a third try of the afternoon, they lead by 25 points to nil with the conversion to come. I think Hoyk dodged one there, Callum Rennick, who I'm, I'm going to say now, I think pound for pound is, is the best player in the league. The, the kid is all over the place and he just looks hungry for work. But he carried the ball into contact, looked like he dropped it and then he pulled it back in. Ref just seemed to allow play to go on. But what, what a great try and Hoyk are playing at tempo. Hawks are just being the... I said it earlier, the Masters their own downfall. Kirk Ford's stroking over penalties and conversions with ease and I, I would imagine Hoyk now are targeting Hawks to score zero and they need to get the bonus point and really send a statement to their teams in the league from day one. I'm feeling old here, Stuart. I'm looking down at the, the technical area for Hoyk. I taught Graham Hogg and I used to babysit for Lewis Bertram. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's beginning to make me feel a bit old up the back here, so I'm just going to focus on the pitch and no bother looking down there. I'm sure they'll appreciate all the the contributions <laughs> you've made, you know, and and keeping them on the straight and narrow, if nothing else. Yeah, I don't think I can take any of the credit for any of that nonsense. But Lewis Bertram was a bloody nightmare. <laughs> The inside track <laughs> from Bruce Aitchis <laughs> and there is uh, Hoyt win the penalty as Rennick throws the ball in. Hoyk with the line out, they've been able to get the ball up as far as their own 10 metre line, so they did exit the 22, secure passage out of the 22, back through the hands they go, and again they're trying to measure the ball as Mitchell with a delicate side-footed right rubber kick down it eventually finds touch just in front of the stand 150 years of stories going into these jerseys. Uh, you always wonder if they if they realise what's gone before them. But when you live in a place like Hoyk, there's there's plenty of people around to remind you of what happened and how lucky oh, they are. Indeed. They're just they're just borrowing the jerseys. But when you look at the team sheet and you see Renix and Welshies, Armstrong, Red Path, you know there's there's some cracking names in there, and I think they're just relishing the chance to play at Mansfield, and it's great to see decent crowd and hopefully if they can keep the ball rolling this crowd's just going to grow and grow over the course of the season they'll be dreaming of another great day in the sunshine like they had when Ronan scored in the corner yeah I mean, and that was that was the the, the thing about and I, I know it's been you know talking points about how the league is, is structured but that will certainly go down as one of the, the most memorable days here was the, that uh, playoff final as Armstrong again looking to try and inject some pace Morgan Tate takes the ball into contact again it's uh, Hoyt looking to try and close the door but Hawks have managed to snatch possession of the ball up towards the, the 10 metre line they go again the halfbacks trying to link up well as Brims with a measured pass they've got three out towards this left hand side but again a misunderstanding involving the onrushing fullback James Cooper so nothing on there for Glasgow Hawks they try and steal again just between the 22 and 10 metre line on that left hand side 15 or so metres in from touch as Welsh just at the back of the, the scrum finds Ford again it's uh, Armstrong Maisie run from Ar from uh, Andrew Mitchell I should say not Armstrong it was the outside centre Mitchell that was carrying it on it was Armstrong's in behind now looking to secure possession but fine footwork there from Andrew Mitchell the outside centre he's now watching on as Hoyt remained just in the fringes of that 22 Jay Linton just goes sideways and straightens up and takes the ball again into contact with Welsh scurrying across the scrum half having a look at the, the options taken on this time by Fraser Wilson Lock forward, Welsh has it once more, on then towards Ford, flat pass there, Rennick couldn't gather, stolen by Glasgow Hawks. Again, Hawks players picking up the scraps, become isolated figures quite quickly, but looking to try and escape from the 22 just now. Spun backwards there, and that was a, a sharp piece of play by Aaron Burgess. 
as he was certainly expecting players behind him and Hawks now have managed to work it outside of the 22 up towards their own 10 metre line across on that far side little grubber kick kick and chase is on here Hoyt now looking to inject some pace just on the defensive to close the door that was fine running from Billy Donaldson across on that right hand side just covering ground quickly to try and secure possession of the ball inside their own 22 Hoyt 27 Glasgow Hawks nil. 12 and a half minutes of the game left to play Hoyt still looking for that four try bonus point, Glasgow Hawks still looking to extinguish the knot from the scoreboard and try and get some points before the end of the contest Ford has it, the pass from Welsh and that's pinged down towards the edge of that uh, 10 metre line as uh, inside the 22 they go, now the momentum of the attack has dropped just ever so slightly but uh, back it comes again to Cooper, who's sitting in a deeper line position just now. Alongside him was Ryan Flett outside centre. It's a uh, recycle ball taken on again by Emery. And uh, Hoyk just looking to try and disrupt the flow of this Glasgow Hawks attack. Hawks again, still on the edge of that 22, fairly central, working out towards their right-hand side. Ball under the legs, picked up again. Determination Rennick just trying to barge back the Hawks players. They take it in turns to carry, then they spread it. Brims again, left footed, all oh, the couple of players in behind, and they've managed to get a try with ten and a half minutes of the game left to play. They had two options there. It was all about the delicate grubber kick in behind the Hoyt defence that had no means of closing the door. And Glasgow Hawks are in for their opening points of the season. 27 points to five with 10 minutes left to play. It's a bit of class for Brims. Absolute class. He sees what's in front. There's nobody in behind sweeping. I think he must have got a call from the outside because there was two players that could have picked that one up and just a little side foot off the, off the left. And I think they've deserved that in the last few minutes. They've really lifted their intensity and, and that's a good score. I'm not sure it's enough, but Hoy could be disappointed to concede. I had a little look down and Graham Hogg was not impressed with that at all. James Pinkerton was very sharp and alert to the opportunity there. And he was off like a flash. The grubber kick was perfectly weighted and Pinkerton's in for his opening points of the season and the first try for Glasgow Hawks. Glasgow Hawks then points on the board, 27 points to five. Brim's looking to add the extras with the conversion attempt. He does with no great difficulties at all. 27 points to seven. Hoyk have made a rod for their own back here because they should have been way out of sight and, and now Hawks danders up and they're going to carry a bit stronger, they're getting numbers to the breakdown, there seems to be a bit more of a buzz about them and Hoyk are just going to have to settle down here because they, they want to get this bonus point. Hawks carrying just outside of the, the 22, again Emery and Hawks beginning to break through the initial line of the Hoyk defence now which is... Uh, Significant in it that really the, the first time last 10 minutes or so it's been happening during the course of the game. It comes back there to Marcus Godwin trying to take the ball in. Glasgow Hawks uh, winning the penalty just outside their, their 22. So with a little bit more invention and maybe a little bit more confidence beginning just to ask a few more questions of Hoyt defensively. 27 points to seven, five and a half minutes of the game left to play. An awkward bounce, but it's uh, been taken on well by the open side flanker there, and suddenly Glasgow Hawks with determination up towards the edge of the, the halfway line. JP Thompson there was very mindful of the bounce of the ball and latched onto it. Little misunderstanding involving Brims. Jay Linton's away. The referee's going to bring play back, though Bruce called that perfectly as uh, Linton running almost half the length of the pitch. Then you hear a chorus of boos, Hoyt knocking the ball forward, just close towards halfway. Linton then hands and hips looking back. Perhaps he felt in the back of his mind that uh, that was going to deny him the, the try scoring opportunity. Jay Linton's run away 50 metres to score what he thought was his try and he gets called back but rather than throw the ball away or do anything stupid he walks back and he gives it to Emery to get the game started. That's an excellent little bit of what we should have in this game of respect towards your opponent. Uh, well played Jay Linton I'm really proud of you for that. Yeah, just di just discipline, just keeping the head, just discipline, and uh, he'd ultimately he'd be disappointed that he was denied the, the, the score, but uh, showing some discipline there, and 27-7, the, the scoreline remains. 
So the improvement perhaps evident during the course of the near 80 minutes for Glasgow Hawks. And there is a fine line here for Sam Graham. Down the heart of the pitch. Needed the offload. Graham still has it up into the 22. Real injection of pace there from Glasgow Hawks. Again, the half-backs looking to spread the ball out towards the right-hand side. Cooper occupying some space out on the right, the full-back. But again, an, an illustration of a, a better understanding of those in the backs through the midfield. And uh, Hoyk penalised on the edge of the, the 22 in a central position. Glasgow Hawks certainly have showing signs of a side that are finishing this game well. A high challenge penalised by our match referee. 27-7 the scoreline. Two and a half minutes to go. And Glasgow Hawks sensing another opportunity to get points on the board. Well, the throw in towards the front of the line so again well executed and Paul Cairn cross now peels off towards the left hand side but are Hawks going to do enough to score they can't quite get the ball out to Cairn cross who was occupying some space the referee is going to his pocket and he brandishes a, a yellow card with 90 seconds of the game left to play and I think that was maybe just a del deliberate knock on there denying the opportunity for Glasgow Hawks who are peppering the line once more and uh, Morgan Tate was uh, just occupying some space on that right hand side and that was a deliberate knockdown but uh, we can see Glasgow Hawks at the moment again trying to steal some space all eyes on Hoyk defensively just now 27-7 they lead into the final minute of the contest and the referee does raise the arm and it's another Glasgow Hawks score with Hoyk down a man Hoyk's then conceding for a second time in this second half 27 points to 12 with the kick to come Hawks then looking to convert for a second time Brims oh that coming back off the upright it was uh, as if he was uh, kicking a bag of cement there it was didn't really get too much elevation on that just on halfway they put in for Glasgow Hawks the time ticking down a chance for James Emery to feed the ball in just across on that right hand side Sam Graham up towards the, the 10 metre line takes the ball into contact and it's recycled and suddenly Halafini and Co just organising themselves again as Glasgow Hawks measured flatter pass there to bring Andrew Sim into play he's knocked the ball on the referee will put whistle to mouth will blow for full time and that will conclude the opening weekend for Hoyt. 27 points to 12, the final score. And for the best part of an hour, the champions looked as if they were going to come through this contest relatively unscathed. Two second half tries scored by their skipper, Sean Muir, really opening up uh, what was a 13-0 lead at the interval. It looked insurmountable at that stage then with uh, Glasgow Hawks uh, facing the onslaught of a Hoyt side going for a bonus point try Hoyt 27, Glasgow Hawks 12 then the final score but the champions are off and running with four points on the board oh, Disappointed to be honest uh, we didn't really fire a shot in the first half um, and I think we're just a bit shell shocked we came here and to win here you've got to come out of the box hard and just didn't do that so 13-0 deficit or whatever it was at half time um, didn't start the second half like we wanted to and then I guess it's been a bit historical for us, but then we can just take the shackles off and play a bit of rugby and it actually turns out okay. So, um, But unfortunately, we can't wait 60 minutes to, to play a bit of rugby. Uh, good good start. Win. That's all I can really ask for. Push on from here. and Yeah, that's really it. Eh? Set or stall it. Kind of got you to never came away with a bonus point. Like, um, But it was good stuff there and yeah, we can push on for next week now. First try was straight off the training field, line out on the far touch line, come to the near touch line, score on the other side. It, it looked like it was going to be a stroll for there on in. What happened the last 20 minutes? Just seemed to be a bit of foot off the gas. Uh, I think uh, missed opportunities and then we kind of credit to Hawks. They kind of threw the ball but, uh, a wee bit and we kind of weren't expecting that and kind of cut us off guard and we kind of let our guard in a wee bit. And rugby, eh? What were the messages at half time? Just that, like we we talked it up about being physical. We didn't do that. Didn't win the race to the breakdown, and you probably saw at times our attack was just quite unstructured. So, just I, I don't know the fix at the minute, but um, we we tried to come out, play a bit of rugby, take the shackles off, and I guess we did that in parts in the second half. So, look, just bitterly disappointed. And some guys, certainly their first game in the Premiership, um, they don't know what to expect. Okay, it's been four years since I last played in the league, so. Got a wee bit of buzz back and I uh, really enjoying it. Great group of boys, so aye. 
And how, how does it feel having the family there to watch? Uh, the wee and uh, she's running about daft somewhere down there. Um, but uh, it's good to have them back doing watching and cheering us on, I suppose. Uh. And you're looking forward to the season? Have, have you got targets set as a squad? Aye, I think um, boys done unbelievable last season, so I'll be trying to replicate that again this season. Um, but we'll take each day uh, game as it comes. And um, aye, there's just a big buzz about Ken's 150th year today, so aye, a big buzz about the place. So we'll just keep carrying on. It's, it's going to be a memorable year. Some of the attack he must have been really pleased with. A few defensive lapses there to shore up. What were the, the takeaways from the coaches at the end there? Um, just. Like what you've just said, I, um, some of the attack was really good, and but some of the inaccuracies in some of the play, so sharpen them up come Tuesday and Thursday next week. And I uh, defence, um, just showing up, getting comms right and connecting with other boys inside and outside. And I uh, just take that on board ne uh, next week and crack on. How's the body feel? I'll tell you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> About to dive yeah, into a nice oh, bath, or are you just going to have a couple of cold ones in the blue sky and sunshine? Probably, I. That'll be it. I'm not really a fan of the ice baths, like, so <laughs> aye, a couple of beers will sort of it. It's been brilliant to see you back. I aye. thought you had a tremendous game and it's going to be a big season Thanks for you all the best. Well aye, cheers for that. Thanks. So a 27-12 win for Hoyk. Next week we're off to Inverleith for Stu Mail versus Peoples. I hope you can join us then. But for now, from all of us here at Asani Mansfield, cheerio.